The swings in Athletes Unlimited Volleyball can be brutal. A week ago, Danny Drews was raking pots and stacking chips. Tonight, she's short stacking it, trying to stay alive in the championship chase. Down to her last blind, Team Drews pushes all in against a legend. Bethania Dela Cruz has run this game before. Back from the bad beats of last week, Bethania has bullied her way to the chip lead. With four aces in her hand, it's time to close in on another title. No Limit Volleyball from Texas is on the button. We shuffle up and deal from Fair Park. Next. Tonight's match is presented by Guaranteed Rates. Two teams coming off Friday night losses. Team Drews takes on Team Dela Cruz. At stake, the number one slot headed in a championship week. If the gold side is going to keep Danny Drews in the captain's chair, they'll need to break out the brooms in this one. Look at our top five entering the evening. But Danny De La Cruz and Danny Drews continue that battle atop the standings. Much yet to be decided as to who will sit in the captain's chairs tomorrow. Welcome inside, everybody. Kevin Barnett alongside former pro Heather Cox. And Heather, we've talked about these captains quite a bit, but Donnie Dela Cruz and Danny Drews, what sets them apart? Well, they are truly exceptional, and they're both obviously great explosive offensive weapons, but what sets them apart is their ability to lead, their ability to carry that responsibility of being a captain and being the primary offensive weapon and just rising to the top and making their teams better around them that truly sets them apart. They are the primary offensive weapons, but we'll give you a defensive weapon to start start this one out and that is going to be Morgan Hentz broke 20 just the fourth player to do that in one match yeah you can't have offense without some great ball control and defense thanks to Morgan Hentz incredible vision and court awareness and just a sixth sense for where the ball is headed watch how much court she covers in one rally keeping the ball alive three different times covering over a hundred feet along the way she's what I would call an explosive defender and keeping her team in it time and time again and watch her lower body strength she's got cat-like quickness which leads hence to league leading 4.97 digs per set just unprecedented numbers now tonight she plays against her former Stanford teammate Cassidy Lickman who's sixth on the leaderboard and has just gotten better and better every week. She has a steady calm presence on the outside and just finds a way to better every ball she touches and elevate the level of play for every team that she's on. She's just a true glue chemistry type of player. Match 24 has championship implications. Drews, Dela Cruz, first serve on the way. Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on Fox Sports is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate and by Dick Sporting Goods. Fair Park Coliseum in Dallas, Texas is the official home of Athletes Unlimited Volleyball. Team Drews and Team Dela Cruz getting ready to wrap up a Saturday night and send us on to week number five, which is championship week. Before we get there, let's take a look at your dream team, Heather Cox. Well, it starts with the middle, Jenna Rosenthal, number one on my dream team, especially after last night's performance, 16 kills, hit 591. She is joined in the middle position by Molly McCage, who leads all middles with over two kills per set. On the outside, no surprise, but Tanya De La Cruz, and Danny Drews, the two captains that have been really the offensive weapons all season long. My opposite position goes to Shayla Castro, who an hour ago we saw play in her final match of a storied two decade career. The two time Olympian is my dream team opposite. And then setter, Natalia Valentin Anderson has taken Carly Lloyd's place in my book because of the incredible defensive presence she's been. Carly was on there earlier because of her great blocking. Valentin Anderson gets it this week because of her great defense. Team Castro, Team Shayla with the sweep victory before this one as we look at our starting lineups for Bethany De La Cruz, her favorite Molly McCage joining her again. Yeah, great middle attack with Molly McCage and Ronica Stone. And on the outside, you've got the combo of power and finesse with De La Cruz and Lickman and Taylor Fricano getting the start again at the opposite position for Alicia Childress at setter. Yeah, third start of the year for Taylor Fricano. On the other side for Team Drews, there were some decisions to be made here. Erica Wilson again at opposite. 
Yep, Danny Drews will start at the outside hitter, but if she gets served a lot, she will move to that opposite position. The lines will be relied on quite a bit. And look for Carly Lloyd at setter to try to get the ball to Rachel Farah and Taylor Sanbothy a lot in the middle. And of course, Morgan Hentz as the libero. Third member of our crew is an Olympian in 2012, Key Michael. What's up, guys? I'm down here on the sidelines, getting you guys as close to the action as possible. But I'm also giving you my player to watch. Today, it's going to be Molly McCabe. You guys know I favor the middles. But also, she had five kills, five blocks last night versus Team Valentine Anderson. She's sixth in overall blocks, despite not even being on the court every single match. But she's on the top of my mind because we did a PEC photo shoot recently, and I got to capture some beautiful behind-the-scenes moments of her, the PEC, and her adopted cute puppy, Franklin. So she's my player to watch tonight. Middles are favored with the key cam. You can hashtag key cam and ask for an interview or some sort of interaction inside Fair Park. As many of the young volleyballers who are here for the Lone Star qualification tournament pile in to enjoy this one. Drews and Dela Cruz. Team Dela Cruz coming off a 69-72 loss at the hands of Team Valentin Anderson last night. And for Team Drews, they're looking for a little redemption here. Coming in 0-2. Team Shayla, 75-56 over them last night, a sweep. But Team Shayla followed that up with another sweep tonight. Yeah! Back slide gets us going. And I see Taylor Sambothy, number 41, with the kill. She's had her offensive struggles. Yeah, she didn't have the night she was hoping for last night. And she can bring, she can be that X factor, that energy, that spark plug, especially if she and Carly Lloyd get in rhythm. Yeah, it was better for Sambothy last night. Hit 188 to the Lee Summit, Missouri native. Just long with the service, where she is typically quite good. We'll play to 25, win by two for three sets. The aggregate score, the addition involved there of those three sets will be our overall score. If we're tied at the end of that, we will have a golden set played to five. A middle battle has broken out. Yeah, and I love it so far that Team Drews is establishing the middle early behind their setter, Carly Lloyd. She was very frustrated after the loss last night, and she said losses are hard to let go of. I have to remember that it's temporary. Being on the losing end is a natural part of competition. The beauty in the low moments, though, is that we have a chance to learn, adapt, grow a little, and reset, and that's what she's hoping to do tonight. A little reset of the play there, and Drews comes up with the kill. I love that quote because it harkens back to what Ray Allen said in a letter to his younger self. He said, just remember that some of the best players at your position miss 60% of the time. Something and that's I the tell way my it's son be. quite a bit, absolutely. She, and, you know, she brought that up. She said athletes all over the world go through this cycle, and it's as tough as it, as, as it is. I love this better. She said it's also kind of addicting and exhilarating. So Carly... Accepting the challenge. Yeah, why do you think we all keep playing until we can't? Carly Lloyd continuing her career here at Athletes Unlimited, now a mom. She and Riley McKibben, mom to Storm. Backslide right back to McCage. Way overhead, that ball is too tight. And Drews gets it to go just wide off the block of Fricano and McCage. Keep your eye on Danny Drew. She got served so much in the previous matches this week that it actually forced them to move her from the outside position to the opposite position. If she can pass well and stay on the outside, this team is better for it. 5-1 open for the team in gold. The lines, good spot, better dig. Transition kill, 6-1. You might be thinking about a timeout if you're Dela Cruz already. Yeah, that is entirely up to the captain, Betty De La Cruz not only having to be the primary offensive weapon, but also responsible for the draft, getting her team together, coming up with practice plans, strategies, substitution patterns, timeouts, oh, and kills. The Lions again in that same spot. Gets another touch. Hustling back is 45 to the net. She gets there. <laughs> Drews misses that one. Called on to do so much. Danny Drews had 52 attempts last night. Next in line was Madison Valines with 31, but just four kills. Yeah, they absolutely need more balance. It will help everybody. I mean, Carly Lloyd, and you can tell that's already been a priority with the way that she's establishing the middle. Every Batman needs a Robin. Every Laverne needs a Shirley. 
This time Betty gets some hands and instead gets the kill. No more digs for the lines in that middle back where she's already excelled. Six three, but Danya, yeah, roll it forward, roll it forward. And that's a tough front row to go up against. You've got De La Cruz, Fricano, and McCage blocking you if you are Danny right now. Fricano with the dig. Farrah nowhere really to go with that ball, just throws it up. That front row doing work, this time going through it. Namaris is back there. And Betty to the deep corner. How many times has that been said in this league? Nomaris, Valeza Gusto with the dig, but Donnie De La Cruz with the kill. Yeah, those two are just a one-two punch. Great one-handed stab. Alicia Childress getting in there for the jump set and a beautiful deep corner shot. Childress remains in the line, serving Drews. Trouble ensues. McCage in transition with authority, 6-5. Cage on the 31 attack, a little bit away from the setter, trying to get the blockers out of rhythm. I love it, both teams really go into the middle early and that's a product of great ball control. The lines, good pass. Double quick, backslide is sent home. Love the idea though, love the double quick. Meaning you've got a quick attacker in the front and a quick attacker behind the setter. Here's the look, you see so much motion. Erica Wilson basically going across the entire length of the court to hit that slide. Did not fool the Olympic veteran, but Danny De La Cruz. High off the block and out of bounds goes Team Drews. There are only two players in league history to break 400 in a single match. They're both on the Let court right now. <laughs> We're looking at one of them. And Betty, of course, the other. They both have done it twice. Wilson didn't get all of that one. Lloyd to the lines. Good touch by McCage. This will be for Cano. Danny back row is wide. Boy, such a pretty swing though. A game of inches and she just barely misses it. Give a lot of credit to the De La Cruz block for forcing that ball out of bounds. Talk about support. See how much support that Dani De La Cruz gets from Taylor Fricano, number 51 in orange. Watch Betty serve. She's one of the few that has a top spin jumper, high velocity, gets up to the 50 mile an hour range. Crowd's loving it. Down the line dug by Namaris. Cass Lickman now in the front row. Deep corner winner. Looks like the kind of shot that her mom, Jules, might hit on a pickleball court. And you would know that because you played Jules in pickleball today. I heard, uh, I've heard your story and her story. Oh, okay. Did they check out? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think Julie's sort of proud of the fact that she ran you, ran you a little bit ragged and the fact that you're a little worn out today. Yeah. She should be. That was fun. Outside, the lines. No, Mares doesn't get that dick. 8-8. Big swing by the lines. One two punch with the lines and Drews hitting on the outside. And Velez Augusto in position, just didn't get quite the hand position she wanted. Out of the Naper thrill, Rachel Farah. McCage forced to throw that one. Drews pops it. Cass resets. Back set from McCage, and Fricano nearly rolled that one to the floor. Into the block once again, covered. This time, Sambothi. Nomaris, Fricano. Down the line, winner. I said keep your eye on 51 in orange because she played well on Wednesday. 7 of 14 in her very first start. 
And struggled last night. Two of ten. She could be the X factor. Such a pretty swing. Watch the hole in the block. Rips it right actually over the block that time. And Fercano is one of those energy players. Like the more she gets in rhythm and gets confidence, the better she gets. Played at UNC. Seem to be no ill effects from the events of Monday. On Taylor Fercano. A look at our net cam right down the middle. It says, though, you're. On the orange side, facing gold right now. A little eye formation from Team Gold. Hence dives in with a save. Drews will hit anything as long as it's popped up on the court surface. The lines, nice roll shot. Some beach chops that she picked up. Here's a look at our net camera. It's crazy that something that small can get such a great angle. Have everybody lined up at the net, there they are. You'll see Carly number three go to the right side of the court. The lines to the left to their natural positions. Bercano again terminates down the line. The player who up until December was in Italy and decided that that professional season was not for her and she ends up here much to the delight of some of the young players in town. Yeah, Taylor said that she has dreamt since she was a little girl of playing professionally in Italy. She finally made that dream come true and it wasn't at all what she was hoping for nor expecting. She said she lost her love of the game while she was overseas playing in Italy and she has regained it being back here playing professionally domestically for Athletes Unlimited and has just changed her outlook on being a professional volleyball player. It's nice not to fall out of love for long. Just a short break. It's not like she went and played basketball. She wanted to see other people. Yeah, she swiped right on yeah. Athletes Unlimited and <laughs> she found a match. Big block there from Carly Lloyd, who proved herself for us last night. Look at our Geico leaderboard popping up there. You can keep track of that championship chase. Team Castro, Team Shayla, that is climbing via that sweep. But Shayla Castro will not be here this week, so if she remains in that captain's chair, which is likely, we'll have the next player slide up. Shayla Castro having played her final match of her more than 20 year career. Two time gold medalist, multi time professional champion in Brazil, Turkey, and Italy. Drews that time, she registered the line. Drew is so hard to defend on the outside. You think about it, there are so few lefties that play the sport of volleyball, and the ones that do, 99.9% .9 of them play on the right side of the court. So if you're ever going up against a lefty, you see them in that position. So rare to see Danny on the left side as a lefty that the other players are saying, we just never defend it. We don't know how. It looks different. It looks weird, and it makes it hard. Twelve all set one. Good change of direction this time, catching him off guard. Little open-handed tip right over the top of the block. Drews dug by Lickman. Betty puts that one off Hence and into the crowd. I'm still pitching for a match where if the ball goes in the crowd, it just gets kept. It just, it's yours. I like it, like yeah. baseball. Promotional match. The Betty giveaway show. Yeah, you want Betty on there if you're a fan, you want a ball. Absolutely. Make it a Dilla Cruz match. That one just out of the reach, Rachel Farah with the kill. And you mentioned they're looking for some offense out of the middle. That has been hard to find for the women in goal. But it's definitely been a priority for Carly Lloyd. Already, Rachel Farah with three swings, Tambothy with th Sambothi with three. It's much better than last night, this early in the match. Glass, another dime to Dela Cruz. Tanya Dela Cruz has represented the Dominican Republic in multiple Olympic games, including 2020 games in Tokyo this past summer. You can see why with hits like that. And I think if you're Team Drews, you need to cheat a little bit more to her. You cannot leave a seam for Betty. 
Nomaris got just enough of it. There are another blast and another nice dig from the orange side. Betty, oh my, head hunting. Danny Drew's off to a great start, playing with confidence, playing aggressive, really taking that role as captain and leader. Watch her wrist as she hits this. The lefty, watch it just, she puts her thumb down, like wrist away, and gets such a sharp angle. Nobody, especially Alicia Childress, expecting that. Drew's now to the back row. Farah, kind of a weird move, but a nice play. She'll hustle back to the net. Hence, recognize that tip early. The lines flat and wide. Celebration's an integral part of what's happening. And a good sign for Team De La Cruz is that their captain, Betty, is at the service line. Second in the league in aces. Tremendous velocity and topspin, gets it to drop. She loves to get it to turn like a knuckleball as a baseball pitcher. Prone to outbursts. Multiple aces in a row, that is. Childress, good pop up. Right side for Kana. Can Betty get there? Yes, she can. No, Morris, not quite. Maximum effort. The inseparable friends continue to combine on plays. Dating back to last season, they've been together, I think, what, eight times now? Yeah, Betty knows what she likes, and she drafts what she wants. Yeah, I'll take it back to last season in just a moment here. Farah. Percano, tip. Picked up by Farah. Block at the net, McCage and Fricano. So looking back at week four of last year, it was many of the same players. Betty drafted McCage and Lickman, both of whom have played critical roles for Team Dela Cruz, not only throughout the week, but already the start of this match. We'll hear from Danny Drews when we come right back. Midpoint, set one. For me, the coolest part about Athletes Unlimited has just been the people in this organization. Not just the players, but also the staff here as well. Um, everyone has been amazing. I feel like I'm making like friends that I'm going to keep in contact long after this league is over. I just think it's so cool that we're really put first as players. We don't have to sacrifice anything to be here. Like We can have our family here, we can have our kids or our fur babies here. and I just think that's amazing that we're really being put first as players and as women. Um, whereas I think in a lot of other cases, we kind of have to sacrifice things to play sports. Danny here with her husband Christian and two of their three dogs. The one dog, their puppy stayed home, as well as the two cats. And one of the things that really stood out to me when I was interviewing Danny is she said, it's amazing to be a rookie in this league and to learn from all these players that I look up to. And then she said, I really want to play with Betty De La Cruz and learn from her. I said, Danny, if you keep playing like this, you're never going to get to play with Betty because you guys are both captains every week. It's not happening next week, that's for sure. What a great set of circumstances. You get to rotate through, play with new players each week, make new friends, perhaps for life, like Betanya and Namaris. Danny back row. Blocked one-on-one, -on -one. Veronica Stone. Insert Stonewall joke here. Dela Cruz opens a two point advantage. McCage with the defense. Fricano with the finish. That's an all new uh, McCage and Fricano combination. 
Is it a law firm or a Netflix show? Netflix what are we show. Going with? Yeah. Netflix show? It's a sketch comedy show, actually, yeah. It, it is with those two, absolutely. <laughs> with some dance numbers in between. <laughs> Off the block, left hand of Lickman and then out of bounds. Erica Wilson. Talk about a pro's pro. Erica Wilson has been all over the world. Germany, Switzerland, Turkey, Philippines. Getting substantial action here in the latter part of season two. And good for her, because she's been at it. She had a great preseason both years, did not play much last season. It's nice that she's been getting to really seize the opportunity. And we've seen that of a lot of players that didn't get a lot of playing time early in the first two weeks of the season but have finally gotten a chance and are really stepping up into that role. Monica Stone, left-hand side of your screen, Another one example. of them. Taylor Back. Fricano. Yep. Fricano, a little kind of hybrid there, and it is Stone. So the late season combination, Fricano to Stone, point, De La Cruz. Thank you to our official partner, Geico, for their support of Athletes Unlimited Volleyball. We've seen De La Cruz do this before, timely runs. 20 to 16. The lines, oh, that's one of her best swings going over the top of Childress. And there's all kind of new partnerships being developed here in Dallas, aren't there, Key? There are. There's some pickleball championship apparently going on. Is that right? Wow. We uh, had a good match today. <laughs> so Kevin's been talking all kinds of trash. That he was the best player on the court. He was. People. Yeah, yeah and, and who won the doubles? My side. Doubles? False, <laughs> false. We're tied 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> Let's just say it was better when we were playing together, but when we weren't, I won. <laughs> well, what about volleyball? Cassidy has been crushing it, and she also got to do a speech for Shayla Castro's retirement earlier. How proud are you of her? Well, Cass thinks deeply, so she always speaks deeply, and she really thinks about it, and she, these players mean so much to her. She's been, you know, a follower of volleyball forever, and the people that came before her are just, just so important. And I love that she's still at the top of her game. She literally just got a block out, and that's an experience play that you only yeah. see from players who have been around the game so long. She came into the game, retired, came back for athletes a little bit. She just got the aces all over the place. She's very crafty, very crafty. And she can do a lot of different things, so she enjoys it. Well, I love seeing her out there. I love being a friend of hers. And thank you so much for being on the broadcast. Thank you. Back to you guys. It's a good thing they don't keep statistics out of the pickleball court. But well, we're keeping them here in the form of the score and aces. Lickman picking up extra points and putting her team ahead in the first. I chose the Starlings because I want to help them to have a better life uh, when they start volleyball. And I can imagine, for example, if they don't have some stuff for practice and it will be difficult, so I want to help them to have an easier life when they start volleyball. Athlete Causes allows athletes to play their season, in part for the benefit of a nonprofit organization of their choice at the end of the season. The Give Lively Foundation makes a grant equal to 50% of that athlete's end of season bonus to that nonprofit partner. Learn more about Causes, AUProsports.com. And that number is north of $150,000 every single season. And just one more thing that makes this Athletes Unlimited League so special and so unique. So many players picking causes near and dear to their hearts. Val Nickel, another example, playing for the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Her dad was diagnosed with Parkinson's, so she plays for him. See that time and time again throughout the league. What a take by Hens. And then missing communication there on the next contact. Ends up creating a point. Hopefully everyone's okay there. A little frustration as we look at Val Nickel, who's staying warm there on the sidelines. Team Drew's again struggling. We might see a Val Nickel. How much talent's out of Illinois, by the way? So many good yeah, players loaded. on the women's side. Sambothi combines with Carly Lloyd. 
Carly Lloyd, by far the best blocking setter in the league, and you put her next to Taylor Sanbothi, and you've got a lethal combination. All right, Carly's having a moment here, a little frustration in the last few plays. Just saying, next point, next point. Got to move forward. Nice dig by Sam Bothy. Ball shot outside. Drews. Betty, well done. So, Kevin, we went into this match knowing that the two captains, Danny Drews and Betty De La Cruz, were going to get the lion's share of the work and that they were going to see a lot of swings. But to me, the difference in this match is who is that next player? Who else is stepping up? to really take the pressure off. Already we've seen Danny Drews take 20 swings and just 13 for Betty. And I think that is the reason that Team De La Cruz is at set point, because of more balance. They will again get a shot at set point here. They have plenty of room. But remember, it's not just about the sets, not just about set victories, traditional volleyball style. It is about the aggregate score. A point you give up now could matter at the final. We'll add up all the points and see. Here's Carly Lloyd. Second chance to close for Team Dela Cruz. It's Betty again. Deja with the dig. Do you go to Betty? Yes, you do. And I think the solution there was just hit it harder. You didn't get it last time. Just come back and give it a full scale whack. Definitely the Kevin Barnett School of Volleyball. I appreciate you, Badania, as does your side. This kill for Badania De La Cruz, hard off the right hand of Erica Wilson, takes set number one for Team De La Cruz. They earn 40 team points and the lead headed to second. Back in Dallas, Texas, Team De La Cruz 25-19 over Team Drews in the first set of what will be three on the evening. We told you we're celebrating starlings all night long, and now we're pleased to be joined by Olympian Kim Oden, who founded Starlings with Byron Schumann back in 1996. She's the chairwoman of the Starlings Board of Directors. That's, that's not enough, though. Olympic bronze medalist, two-time Olympic captain. Welcome back, Kim. Thank you very much, Kevin. Hello, Heather. Hello. You guys are doing a great job. So fun to be here. Thank you for letting me come today. We're glad you're tuning in. Tell us about the core mission of the Starlings organization. First, I just want to say it was a great send off for Shayla Castro. That was awesome. What a player she is. And uh, I will tell you the mission of Starlings is to positively impact the lives of at-risk girls through the sport of volleyball. That's our whole, our, our whole goal. It's very expensive to play uh, club volleyball and not everyone can afford it. So Starlings is an opportunity for those from maybe disadvantaged backgrounds or, or different areas um, to definitely have access to quality club volleyball. So Kim, if I'm a young girl and I wanna get involved, how do I do it? Volleyball is my passion, how do I play? So first, if you have access to the internet or if your school has access to the internet, check out www.starlings.org. We have about 80 active Starlings clubs in 24 states. So hopefully one of them is near you. Um, and if you're interested, check out our website and to make sure there's a program near you. And if there isn't, I advise you to pound your middle school and high school volleyball coaches and also your mom, dad, and auntie uh, to start a Starlings in your area. And all of that information can be found on our website too. And Kim, we're all excited about a national tournament that you have coming up in San Diego in June. Tell us more about it. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. There is a lot of dancing. There are fun giveaways. There are special guest speakers like Cassidy Lickman, Molly McCage. Uh, we had uh, those guys there last year. It was really fun. Um, and this year, the national tournament will also have our second annual college showcase which is for college coaches looking for uh, Starlings to recruit and Starlings players who are wanting to play volleyball in college. So that'll be on June 16th. Opening ceremonies are also June 16th, and this is in San Diego uh, at Alliant University. Um, additionally, the tournament will go from June 17th to June 19th, and we'll have about 120 teams from all over the country participating. 
You guys have been partners with Athletes Unlimited since last year, since the founding of this league. How does the relationship between the organizations affect your Starlings athletes? Oh my gosh, in so many ways. We love this relationship. First, I want to say thanks to Bethania Dela Cruz and Lauren Stiverings for choosing Starlings as their cause this season. I'm so sorry Lauren got injured. Um, thanks also to Athletes Unlimited for, for providing a volleyball clinic for Starlings players in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Our girls absolutely loved it. And as I mentioned last year at our opening ceremonies, our guest speakers were Molly McCage, Erica Wilson, Cassidy Lickman, and a softball player, Jasmine Jackson, all from Athletes Unlimited. And they were so great. They spoke to our girls and they stayed for I don't know, an hour and a half afterwards to sign all the autographs. They had 600 girls wanting their autograph and wanting a picture with them, and they were so great with the girls. So it just, Athletes Unlimited, for our girls to see um, the possibilities of what volleyball can do for you in your life is just, um, I think it's life-changing. So we're very excited. Well, it's been wonderful to watch what you've done to grow the game. Kim, you've been watching Athletes Unlimited all season. We loved watching you play at Stanford, loved watching you play in the Olympics. How much does this make you want to play again? Oh, my gosh. I love it, except that uh, without my cartilage these days, it, uh, I kind of, Minor I kind detail. of I'm, I'm enjoying, I am enjoying watching them a lot. I'm also enjoying watching... Uh, Deidre Collins, Taiba Hanif, and um, and Lori Corbelli on the sidelines. Those are the people that are cartilage challenged, probably like me. But <laughs> um, anyway, it's so much fun to watch this. And uh, uh, my playing days are over, and I'm excited to help the younger generation play. And I'm excited to watch these fantastic women play this great sport. Kim, it's a sad club that you and I are in, but it is a fantastic thing to have you still in the game and doing such great work. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Thank so you for all that you've done and the vision that you had to found Starlings and do the things that you guys are doing. Thank you very much, you guys. Continue to do well and go Athletes Unlimited. All right, thanks, Kim. Kim Oden, two-time Olympic captain, was named best spiker during one of our Olympic performances and continuing to be a part of the game as it, it seems like we all end up doing. I think you might be here and then go after your playing career and we here we all sit. We set. just can't quit it. And if that <laughs> Odin name sounds familiar, of course, it is maybe the, the first family of volleyball or one of the first families of volleyball, Elena Odin, an Olympian as well, and a star at University of the Pacific. And of course, the, the baby Bev, a star at Stanford as well. And the Odin family is certainly a special one and near and dear to my heart. Elena was a teammate of mine and uh, I just love all the Odins to death. Odins and Sados for the title, basically. Starlings tweeting out, we're grateful for the partnership and AU athletes who are the best role models for Starlings players everywhere. Thank you for what you do. Together we can truly give all girls the chance to soar. Oh, and the level of play has been soaring here while we've been enjoying Kim Oden's little visit with us. It's 6-3. Team Dela Cruz continues its onslaught. It opened 6-3 and set number one the other way. This time, Dela Cruz in control. Watch on serve receive for some crossing patterns. You might see a slide here to try and get a little bit more creative, a little bit more offense. Drew's box fly for Kano for the moment. That tough front row right now. Good point scoring for Dela Cruz, and there's another one. Bedania De La Cruz picks up the point, but it's McCage and Fricano, too, who are really an intimidating presence on that right side. 7-3 opener. Team De La Cruz in control. They already led 25-19 into this set. They're now up by 10, 32-22. Why is it important to play for the Starlings? You'll find out on the other side when we get back to Dallas. Supporting Starlings with Athletes Unlimited is really important. Everybody should be able to use their talents and play this sport. And that's what Starlings is doing. I think investing in groups like Starlings is so important for the growth of volleyball because if we don't support the next generation, teach, um, encourage, they're not gonna have the same confidence we might have had to continue to break down barriers, push through tough times and really 
bring volleyball to what it is now. Having the opportunity as a young woman to see your role models in real life and get to play with them and learn from them is huge. And it's something that really drove me as a young player and so it's really important to me to also bring that back. It's a way to give back to the game that's given us so much. Starlings Volleyball USA serves disadvantaged girls in over 65 cities and several Native American reservations na nationwide. Starlings has over 80 clubs throughout the country and more than 3,000 girls participating. Over 50,000 girls have played for Starlings the last 25 years. That organization that Kim Oden founded, about 25% of Starlings coaches were previously Starlings players. Talk about giving back. Some have even started their own Starlings programs. And that is positively a remarkable effort that Starlings has put together a mission to positively impact the lives of at-risk girls through the sport of volleyball. You can go to starlings.org if you want more information, and you really should. 8-3 here, Team Delacruz, Kevin Barnett alongside former pro Heather Cox and Olympian Key Michael from Dallas, Texas, match 24 and what will be 30 on the season. Was there a net violation? There was not. Apparently it was just the ball. I might think about a challenge there, but for the moment it's not. They're talking great. about it. Danny's oh, looking waiting at Carly. For a replay. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, I would challenge that. Yeah, here that. comes the challenge. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh. Way to work the system. No, they're not doing it. Oh, I'm shocked. I am too. I thought there was a net. See if they continue to serve Danny Drews. Instead, it's the lines. Oh, that time, yeah, I think there was a net. <laughs> that was an yeah. obvious one. <laughs> Somebody caught a fish in there. And in your living room, if you're saying ball never lies, good for you. You're a volleyball player. Yep, ball tells all. <laughs> I heard that this morning from Jules Lickman. <laughs> Just had a flashback. Carly Lloyd, an Olympian and medalist herself. Backslide, McCage. Again, not quite there. It's an interesting matchup in this league that has so much veteran experience like Carly Lloyd. When I look on both sides of the net, one side has all the experience, essentially. That was an absolute blast. And right over the top of the block. Now we'll get a challenge as to whether that ball was in or out. It was close on that back line. Yeah, we're sitting right on that line. I thought it was in. It's going to be the back edge of the line if it is. All right, if it touches any bit at all of white, the ball is in. And by the way, you can look at that, too. You also ought to look at the altitude of this attack from Batania. Yeah, look how high above the block she's swinging. That's at the top of the antenna, kids. Yeah, this is a gift getting to see it multiple times. Boy. Inconclusive there. This week, teams are one for 13 in challenges. Wow. Not including this one. Look at how high that is. Yeah. No chance that's touching the block. See right there, I think that's in. Yeah, I agree with you there. That's a much better look. It definitely gets the white. So originally ruled in. Oh boy. That <laughs> one though, you can't tell where it's touching. I think the right. play before you could see the touch on the white line. If it's touching right there, it's in. It's just hard to tell. There's no depth perception with that that look. And it's going to have to be conclusive, although I've been amazed, particularly in collegiate volleyball, at the things that get overturned or seen inside of giant pixels that look like you're playing a Nintendo game in 1987. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going within. I'm making a stand. All right. Risking 12 points, Heather Cox goes within. I'm a risk seeker. And taking home 12 points, moving up the Geico announcer's leaderboard is Heather Cox, just ahead of Key Michael. Key's going to have to do something to get some points up there. Or you're going to be in the number one chair headed to championship week. Each team gets two challenges per set. You use it or lose it. Ball in or out, as you just saw there. Both net or block touch, and then all manner of line faults are reviewable.
Pence and Drews collide. You'll have to go right side. Wilson, a blast to Nomaris. Heads up play by Carly Lloyd, knowing that her outside hitter was not available. And Erica Wilson just making the most of this swing. Great job threading the needle down the line right outside of Lickman's touch. Mercano cross court, one of her best attacks. So she's showing range. It's good on Key Michael, who's found Tasha Cloud. It's a basketball friend for you, Key. You guys, some familiar faces. Tosh, Nikki, Izzy. You guys, tell me, how great is it, Athletes Unlimited Volleyball? It's amazing uh, to be out here, to see the crowd, to see the elite competition on the floor. It's been a really amazing, amazing season. I'm proud of them. I feel like I've been hyping it up all basketball season. I was waiting for this moment. I was telling you how good it was going to be. And I've seen you jump out of your chair at least three times now. Absolutely, absolutely. They are spiking that ball with some force, OK? And I love it. I love You're it. You're here for it. I'm here for it. So what have you been up to since basketball season? Uh, just working out, took some time um, off to myself. You know, those five weeks of playing, they catch up to you, so rest in the body. But now, just getting ready for WNBA training camp. We started out a week, so I had to get out here before we started. I had to come out, support. This is the AU family, and I love it. Family, it is. Do you miss everyone? Do you what? keep in touch with everyone? I miss it so much. I can't wait for AU next season. We're already in talks of what's happening next year, so it's an exciting time, but this makes me miss it so much more. Just this environment, the togetherness and the family atmosphere is amazing. It's, and I feel like it's like that across the sport and now, you know, basketball, volleyball, lacrosse, softball, we all become one big We're family. One. But We're what have you learned about volleyball since you've been here? I saw you guys doing some hand signals. Show me in. In. Show me out. Out. Show me touch. <laughs> Close <laughs> enough. What about uh, football? Ace. Ace serve. Ace. Ace. Everybody touches it once he serves. Yeah. Couple, we got a, we got a couple Kale, of buckets. Kale just, yeah. Cassidy just killed it. Cassidy, Cassidy just killed it. Cassidy just killed it. Are you? Period. Well, thank you guys so much for being on the broadcast. It's awesome having you here. Absolutely. Bye, guys. Hey, Key, what's the sign for traveling? <laughs> what's the what? Traveling. traveling. Let's see traveling. traveling. No, for you, Key. Oh, you for have me. to. Yeah. Oh, oh. Like this. come on. Yeah. They know. <laughs> oh. That was a quiz for me. Like... No, Key is cheating in there. <laughs> I'm cheating. They're doing my homework for me. I know, right? <laughs> I know your arm is burning. It is, right? These cameras are right not now. light. They are not light. Tasha Cloud. Just hold your camera. Tasha Cloud, truly a fun human being, has been in stadium or field or arena for all four sports in the Athletes Unlimited brand. And Actually, recipient of the first ever trade. There was a draft day trade. Tasha Cloud picked up Emmanuel, Tiana Hawkins' son, who traded himself from mom's team to Tasha's Cloud, Tasha Cloud's team at the end of the draft. History Go made. Figure. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Sambothi backslide as we get back to action here in the second set. Continues to be. Dela Cruz, they lead now by 11 in the overall. And I think the difference has been the supporting cast for Betty De La Cruz. Betty's getting her numbers. She's got nine kills, but so many other people are getting involved. Taylor percano has got 11 swings. Molly McCage has 11 swings. Lickman has 14. Danny Drews isn't getting that same type of support from her supporting cast. Well, we're about to get some support to the atmosphere because there's 10 more trees going in the ground thanks to the Aspiration Aces program. We have planted more than 1,600 trees entering tonight. We're over 1,700 at this point, thanks to Aspiration's support of Athletes Unlimited. Back corner, winner. That's the coffin corner back there. Put some nails in it, Betty. And it seems to be the international players, the Olympians, that know exactly how to find that coffin corner. I mean, it's such a go-to move. Oh, hello, sweetie. <laughs> a young fan in the making. Young volleyball player in the making. Dogs and babies. That is the quickest way to get the key cam yeah, active. Th that was like a squirrel for me. I mean, like, divert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Key is collecting oh, things from sharing. children. Yeah. <laughs> Key's having a good time in the arena. And you could be, too, if you come for championship week next week. And that's Carly Lloyd's little girl, Storm. Yep. 
just took her first steps not too long ago while here in Dallas. And might just win the cutest baby award ever. I hope my kids, Allie and Will, are not listening right now, but Storm, you are a sweet pea. Come and take your first steps to becoming a volleyball fan in person. Come to Fair Park next week. Plenty of courtside seats still available. Come and join us, AUProsports.com slash tickets is where you can pick up your invitation to join us live. How about the job that Carly Lloyd is doing? Super mom, super professional athlete, wearing so many hats at once and doing it with such grace. <laughs> True is wearing one hat, and that is primary attacker. I guess dog mom would be hat number two. Yeah, Danny Drews with her ninth kill on 34 swings. She has been so heavily re relied on from her team. You talk about being a dog mom. Fun fact for Danny. You ready for it? Yes, always fun facts. Petrified of cats. Owns two and told me she's flat out petrified of them. I said, why? She says, well, they're like little baby lions. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's going on in their mind. Another nice touch by Childress. Yeah, Childress has redirected a number of balls at the net to create opportunity for her side. Yeah, the 2016 Olympian uh, just makes it look effortless. She too is a mom, a mom of three, the youngest being eight months old. You see the movement of Childress and the great directions she sets on that ball to Betty. And Alicia was another player who did not play too much at the very beginning of the league, but has become a regular starter as McCage picks the one-on-one -on -one block. Watch McCage, she gets juked, goes left, and then at the last second, adjust, goes right. Perfect timing. Looking like Gregory Jim a few years ago. <laughs> Drews, straight down for Kano this time. That is an intimidating block. You've got Molly McCage at six foot three, Taylor Furcano at six foot four, and Danny Drew saying, where on earth am I gonna hit it? The Orange Crush, 18 to 12 via back-to-back -back stuff blocks. Their lead is six, and the kids are loving it. There's Storm, family and friends in stadium this year. What a year it's been. Remember, I love you. I love you. When you go to hit, remember okay, okay. our love. Same to you. Okay. <laughs> okay, three, three. Vamos, va. It's okay, confident. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! In front of me. In front of me, I have. You were into the action with Guaranteed Raid, an international volleyball assassin, Bethania De La Cruz. Uh, when you go to attack, remember my love for you. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Betty, you know, what's, you know what's even better than winning? What? Beating your friends while A you're doing it. Absolutely. <laughs> and so far, so good for Betty De La Cruz. 11 kills and just putting on a little bit of a clinic for her rookie captain on the other side of the net. Kevin Barnett alongside Heather Cox and Olivia Key Michael. It is 18 12 in the second set, but an extension of a lead continues now. 13 points, the advantage for Team De La Cruz in the overall 44 31. Team De La Cruz is just loaded with so many veterans, and it shows just really mature, smart players. It's the type of team that in the huddle, they're talking strategy, they're talking changes, they're not talking about energy and rah rah stuff. They are getting it done. We thought we might see Val Nickel, that's exactly what's happened, but it hasn't changed the narrative. Change at setter has produced the same sort of results as two more points go on the leaderboard for this match, and points are piling up on the Geico leaderboard on the side of your screen. Yeah, and Betty De La Cruz just continues to create separation between the first and second spot. The lines with the tip, Fercano plays it up easily. She'll get it right back and miss it down the line. First time. 
see if that can spark a little mini run for Team Drews. It all starts with a tough serve. Val Nickel rotates to the back row, so three hitters now across the front for Team Drews. See Hens getting in position to just patrol the entire backcourt there in the black jersey. He serves will help. Thanks, Val Nickel, who just planted 10 trees thanks to Aspiration support. The Aspiration Aces program in effect. So much movement on that ball makes it so hard, and it's shocking to see Cass Lickman get ace, one of the best ball control players on the floor. Molly McKay jumping over the top of it, definitely done to within three feet of the line. Betty back. 11 kills, hitting 326 digs. Yeah, just pile on some aces here. Another day's work. Missed that one. Betty unusual for a lot of right-handers going on the left side and hitting wrist away. That side usually re reserved for the left-handed jump servers of the world. Hence, stepped into that one. Block from McCage once again. A complete block party going on for Team De La Cruz. Seven team blocks now, largely in part to Molly McCage and Taylor Fricano. In perfect rhythm. I mean, that is a wall that those two are putting up. Look at the forearms penetrating the net, just nowhere for that ball to go. A long 6-3 next to a long 6-4. Down the line, Wilson. I, I love that Wilson has come in the last two matches and been utterly fearless. And she's not getting a ton of swings, so she is making the most. When her setters go to her, she is earning her keep. Work yet to do for Team Drews. Farah will come with a one, two, three, single foot takeoff. Nickel pops it up. Tough opportunity for Wilson. For Kano again. Missed. These points are all important just to keep it close here. Every point Drews gets, they're back to within 11. A deficit of 13 or 14. We've only ever seen a comeback from that one time a couple weeks ago. Last week, as a matter of fact. Betty throws it right into the middle. Twenty-three seventeen. Betty just racking him up, finding the open area of the court, that campfire for her 12th kill. Leads all players on the court in offense so far. Childress back to the front row for Connor with a serve. Takes Drews out. Betty stretches into the corner. Wilson, solid crack. Four kills now for Erica Wilson. Just money, really making the most of every swing opportunity she's given. Does a nice job keeping the ball in front of her, even though this ball is set off the net, able to see the block and get inside the hands of Veronica Stone. Little eye formation again as you see Team Drews talking about the block. We've got Nickel, Valines, and San Bofi in the front court. And then Morgan Hens in the black jersey as the Libero will just patrol that back court. Tough play for Lickman, dug by the lines. Betty back row. Yeah, the captain's dueling from the back row middle. Set point, Dela Cruz. Roll shot is good. Madison Valines back to her Arizona days. 
Be proud, Steve Walker. Bear down. Set point number two, Dela Cruz. Betty under it. With Noma with the out. cover. Yeah, close. Back to back, Val Nickel, who can also be impactful at the net at 6 1. Nice little mini run by Team Drews. They are back to within 10. We've seen teams back from 24 20 before in a set. And even though De La Cruz got blocked, those last two look for Childress to go to her again. Heather, you called it. Even when everyone expects it, Bethania delivers. 50-39 will be the margin for Bethania De La Cruz and her team entering the third set and looking for a sweep. Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on Fox Sports is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate and by Dick Sporting Goods. Tonight's match is presented by Guaranteed Rate. Dallas has seen professional volleyball for a second season. We are almost through with week four. We are one set away from heading on to the championship. But Tanya Dilla Cruz and her crew, 50-39, headed to the third. How have they done it? Here's some highlights. Yeah, Team Drews needs more of this to come back in this third set. And by this, I mean running the middle attack. They started off early, establishing the middle, this time with Rachel Farah on the side. But just three kills for Rachel and five for the middle position. Here, Danny Drews with the dig, creating some transition offense opportunity. Nine kills for Drews, but as a team, they're hitting just 120. On the other side for Team De La Cruz, Cassidy Lickman has been money like she always is. Here they overload the zone to try and hold the block. It works great. Cassidy Lickman inside for the fifth kill. Then Betty De La Cruz has been all power. We've seen her hit over the block, around the block. This time Molly McCage holds the middle block and Betty picks up her 14th kill. And then Molly McCage just patrolling the middle, picks up her third block here. And Team De La Cruz is hitting on all cylinders, hitting 250 as a team behind those 30 kills, 41 digs, so creating a lot of transition opportunities. And then look at the blocking differential, just a huge difference. Eight blocks for De La Cruz to Drew's three. They have limited, courtesy of some of those blocks and things you just identified, Team Drews to a 120 percentage for yeah, this match. That's not going to get it done. And the biggest reason is because they're way too predictable. Danny Drews has taken 39 swings, the next greatest swing total, all the way down to 17 with Madison Valines. They need to have a lot more balance. Yeah, less than half. And that's approaching the schedule of the second match. That was last night on Friday. It was 52-31. And conversely, this is how you do it. Yes, Team De La Cruz has that one star, that go-to player. And yes, Betty has swung 33 times, but also three other people have 15 or more swings. That's the difference. Val Nichols starts out this set, goes right to Taylor Sambothi. It's part of the game plan, get those middles involved. They did it early in set one and have gone away from it. Let's see if they can stick to it longer here in this third set. Cruz keeps herself an outside hitter. And subbing in at the opposite spot is Deja McClendon. Yeah, and Val Nickel remains as the setter on the court. So working with different personnel changes, which I like. Hey, if something's not working, keep fiddling. You've got an all-star roster here. You might as well use them. Stone this time on the back slide. Veronica Stone doing a nice job off of one leg, going one on one. Alicia Chovas holds Rachel Farah in the middle to get her hitter open. So they put McClendon into that passing formation out of the opposite spot, but another miss offensively goes wide. 
And fortunately for you, but unfortunately for Carly Lloyd, we have a chance to talk to her. Carly, this match started with you in. Why the reason to pull you out? I mean, there's always, it's different reasons. I think for me, I'm not, maybe I'm not on my game the way that I can be. But sometimes you just need a change with energy with some, a different setter can come in and give a little bit of something different. And um, as you can tell, it's been a tough week for us. So I think this change is hopefully just going to get everyone a little bit more fired up. Um, maybe give a little more, do a little something different and get us back into this. So Carly, the view definitely different, the perspective different from the bench. You sat the latter part of that second set. Mm -hmm. What do you see? How can you help your team with what you're seeing? Yeah, I'm, well, what I'm going to do is watch their block and just help Val with an offensive play that can give us a little more space. I feel like they're blocking a lot of balls tonight, and that can partly be with us being a little bit out of system, but the other thing is just helping our attackers with where they can swing and where the open holes are. Um, that's what I'm hoping to see and be able to give our team um, to get us this set and maybe even the match, because in this league it can, it can happen. So. We've been talking a lot about the distribution. How much of that was forced, and, and what were your thoughts on? I mean, it has to be in your head that you know you got to go somewhere else, but then ending up sitting Danny nearly every ball. Yeah, I mean when we're when we're not in system, it's hard to force a middle block set, and then we got started getting a little quiet. I think for a while there. So when you don't hear attackers calling for the ball, and there's not a lot of urgency in that. It, can get really one dimensional when you know who your go to attacker is. So she did get a lot of balls um, in both of those first two sets. I'm hoping that the distribution's a little more even this set and we can get everyone a little more involved. Erica did have a couple good kills at the end of set two, so maybe we can fire some back to her and open open up some space for Danny. They're kind of just sitting on her. So Yeah, we see Danny getting picked on yet yeah. again. So how do you control a player like Betty De La Cruz? How do you try and neutralize her? What we've been talking about is just getting over. Um, a lot of times with an attacker like that that goes up and swings really high, you want to start reaching and touching the ball. And really what we want to do is just take some space of the court so that our defense can play around it. Betty swings high and deep and hard. So if we can just take up that m middle meat of the court and let our defense play around us, that's our best shot at maybe slowing her down a little bit. And Carly, I yes, hesitate. Maddie. That was a nice one, huh? Sorry, I, what? Oh, I just I hesitate to even bring it up because I know it's so hard to stay focused on the match. But we did get to see Baby Storm a while yeah. ago. How do you keep so present, so focused as a mom, as an athlete, doing everything out there? It's honestly really, really hard. It is exhausting, but I just keep reminding myself that the only thing I can do is be present in the moment that I'm in, whether I'm with her or I'm on the court. I'm just trying to do my best here. I'm exhausted, to be honest with you. It's a lot, um, but I'm so grateful that I can be doing this and that she's here and we can tell her about it one day. <laughs> What's this experience done for you and your plans for the future in regards to volleyball? This was kind of a test run for me. I was, uh, I wanted to give it a shot. I liked that it. it was six weeks. I can see if I want to play in the future, and I've been feeling happy to be back on the court. So we're talking about a possible contract over in Europe, um, which would start in September, and we're talking some details and it could it could happen. So it's there's a high chance that I'll be playing in Europe this season. Well, you look amazing out there. Thank Truly you. an inspiration. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Carly. Thanks, Kevin. All right, 6-5. Good result here for Team Drews to start the third set. That ball is just long. There's the storm. Watching mom. Has the key cam even left storm? I wouldn't if I were the key cam. <laughs> Wilson back in. And that ball, aha! One for one. You get me in the head, I get a shot on you. Yeah, tit for tat for sure. It's funny, but it, that, it, it's the volleyball gods. That's just the way it works sometimes. Great reach. Look at that. I mean, just at the top of a reach, the back row attack ends at the net, getting full extension. 7-7, seven, seven, a competitive third set. There's Riley McKibben, dadding so hard right now. Ricano hitting 190 tonight. Good to see her getting a bunch of opportunities. Sambothi, again a soft touch. 
Betty. Boom by A. Up against three blockers, out of the backcourt, and still able to find the open court. 16 kills now for the captain and the leader of the leaderboard. Yeah, she and Alicia Glass Childress have just looked like they're in perfect communication, unspoken communication. Absolutely. So begs the question, if Betty remains on top of the leaderboard, what does she do with her draft? How integral is that setter relationship and chemistry? Do you take Alicia Childress high in your draft pick? Uh, I would go with yes. Setters playing such a huge role for hitters in terms of their success, their feel for the game. Cut inside, that one just out of the reach of Nomaris. Thank you to our official partner Geico for their support of Athletes Unlimited Volleyball as we head towards championship week in about two-thirds of a set. Did she get the touch? Yes. Absolutely. You heard her call it out. A Pac-12 battle at the net here in Dallas. You can tell there's a concerted effort by both teams to get the ball to the middle more. All depends on the pass. That's the lineup they've gone to, trying to get more passing stability over there on Team Drews. Hence, good call. Ball's in the end town. Here, Carly Lloyd say it's been kind of a rough week for us. Taylor saying both he's been in on that. Just not the connection. Forget any of the numbers. Right. Just not connecting with the setter the way she liked to. Just not seeing the rhythm. It's the biggest challenge with this format, a new team every week, establishing that chemistry and rhythm between the setters and the hitters. Yeah, particularly tough for the middles of all the players. But Team Drews has changed it around enough here. It's 10-10. Nice. I think that's the first setter kill we've seen in this match. I love a setter dump on a tight ball when the setter's front row. Just one more offensive weapon, and you keep them guessing. Watch Elisa Childers. She puts both hands up, and then at the last second drops her hand and becomes an attacker. Do you want some velocity on the ball? Is that what you wanted? We got it, and that was a... Amazing set from Val Nickel, getting the ball right to the sweet spot for Danny Drews. Look at her in rhythm and so explosive, hitting at the top of her reach, 44 miles an hour for Danny Drews attack. Just splits the block. I like how Val brought her inside. Bump set to Betty. OT, just long. And Team Drews takes the lead. We've seen it done before. Lose the first two sets and come back and win the match and the aggregate scoring in the third. It's not easy, but it can be done. It's going to take a big run. 15 is the number here that Team Dela Cruz is looking for for the overall. The lines with the dig. Play continues. McCage slices it. Hence dives and touches, but it goes into the Bermuda Triangle. Our Darko leaderboard continuing to flux and change as points are added and subtract. Watch McCage go behind the setter and just cause complete and utter disarray. Three players down. Deep corners wide open on the serve here. Farah slices around the side of it. Go back to the first set. We went to the technical timeout at 15-16. Dela Cruz with a one-point lead. And in my notes, Kevin, at that point, Team Drews hitting 210 as a team. So very efficient attacking. Now they're down to 160. And that will shrink further via the McCage block that just happened on court. 14-12, Team Drews. 
given up a few points. A 3-0 run by Dela Cruz, including that back-breaking block by Molly McCage. A 64-51 lead. They are one away from taking the overall. Our team Dela Cruz, Team Drews, questions to answer in our final match of Week Four. Hola, soy Betania de la Cruz y primero quiero agradecer por todo el apoyo que siempre me brindan y espero que me sigan aquí en la Liga de Estados Unidos, Athletes Unlimited. Follow me en Instagram, The Big Bet. Drop here. I got your deep. Yeah. Here we go. I know it's kind of off. It's, off. it's not your real flow. So you're making good swings on that. Thank you. And hey, set live here. Set live. Come on, deep. Let's go, baby. Yeah, go, Erica. Yes, Erica. That's it. Woo! You are into the action with Guaranteed Rate and Deja McClendon. You start to hear as players continue along the professional path. They learn how to make those around them better, not just have everything dictated towards their own personal performance. Absolutely. I love the way she's leading out there, giving everybody confidence. Four-time All-American at Penn State has a lot of experience to share. Right side, Drews. Oh, that was going to be out. Wilson played it up. Opportunity, Dela Cruz. Little extra work involved, and Wilson will collect the kill. They're back to within one, and they again hold off Dela Cruz from the overall, who will, for the second time, try and close it out. 60 team points, if they can get to 15 here for Team Dela Cruz. Going to be difficult. Wilson again down the line, a winner. 14 all. Boy, Erica Wilson with back-to-back -back great swings, making the most of it. I love it. Takes a look at the Jumbotron to make, take another look at it, because she loved it so much. Right inside the hands of Betty. Bad pass again, almost a replay of the last one. Farrow this time. The lead again belongs to the women in gold. Val Nichols done a very nice job coming in for Carly Lloyd and continuing to try to establish the middle. You see Rachel Ferrer coming right at you. So much harder to defend that quick attack if you can get a good pass. Hey, service. Boy, this little mini run is becoming a max run. Now three aces for Team Drews. Yeah, Team Drews has run a 4-0 out of the timeout. Betty over to the right-hand side, gets the kill, closes out on the sixth attempt. Enough of that. The 60 points. And now rotates into the backcourt. I think this is such a great point scoring rotation for Team De La Cruz. They are now looking for the sweep. Big Beth and Team De La Cruz. Trying to get the curveball action, get it to drop. Overpass for Kano from a high point. Hens has it. McCage calls it. Hens splits for the dig. Betty, back row. Party, Party rock. rock. <laughs> <laughs> Say it together. Hence again. Wow. Someone get out the tracker on Hence. Might be 200 feet. Fricano covered by Wilson. Back row into the net. Oh, exhaustion setting in. We're tied at 16. Such a bummer of a way to end such an incredible rally. Look at Hence just all out dive. Incredible up. Watch the effort. Goes about three body lengths to get that ball up. She is truly out of this world. 
no surprise, she will be heading to train with Karch Karai and the U.S. national team once the season is complete. And a timely get by Key Michael inside Fair Park. We'll get to Key in just a moment. 16 all, Bethania at the line. The line's nice swing. Again, right to that back line. Now let's try Key Michael. Hi, Key. I'm here with Nick. This is Morgan Hentz's boyfriend. What is it like watching her out there? Are you getting nervous? I'm nervous. Uh, I'm nervous, but I'm pretty confident in her. Just She always goes 100%, so I'm pretty confident that she will get where she's supposed to be, get the ball all the time. So. She literally does go 100% all of the time. What do you guys get up to when she's not playing well there? Um, we watch movies, going drive around Cincinnati. We took a uh, pottery class recently, so we were doing some pottery. Is she any good? I feel like she's pretty creative. Yeah, we're pretty good. Uh, we do pretty decent. Our uh, our pots turned out a little wonky, but our our guy that teaches us, he said they're they're homemade, so that's kind of what we what we call them. So imperfectly perfect. Yeah. So when you guys play, do you guys play any sports together? Do you get really competitive? Um, I'll hit volleyball with her. We'll go out and play like sand volleyball or something like that, but. Yeah, it gets pretty competitive. She doesn't go 100% during that, because. But if you talk trash to her enough, she'll she'll every now and then just kind of put you in your place, which is pretty pretty funny to get it out of her. But so you gotta poke the bear. She'll be yeah. she'll be calm, cool, and collected unless you poke her. Yeah. Um. So you guys have known each other since high school. You guys know each other for ages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we met in high school, and then. Um, yeah, she went away to college, so we didn't, yeah. couldn't stay in touch super like a lot because she was busy all the time. But after college, we kind of reconnected and got more close, so. Rekindled. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, I'm so glad that you were able to come and see her in person. When's the last time you got to see her play volleyball? That's what I was telling her. Last time I saw her was freshman year in college when she was in the national championship. We went up for like this semifinal and finals game. So I was like, that's what I was telling her. It's been like six years since I saw her, saw her play last Six so. years. Well, the other tidbit is you're going to, to dental school, so she'll always have perfect teeth. Going to apply, hopefully I get it. So yeah, that's the goal. That's great news for her and her dentist, Bill. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for being on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good talking to you. Great get by Key right there as Morgan Hens continues her excellence on the floor. I talked to Cassidy Lickman and John Dunning about what makes Morgan Hens so special and just so talented. And they talk about a couple of things. The first thing being her vision. So she actually gets to the area of the court that she needs to be before anybody else is capable. The next thing that she does is just her lateral movement when she's kind of in that squat position, when she's in that defensive position, the strength of her legs and the strength of her core to keep her there is the other thing. And then the third thing that sets her apart is her ability to focus every single point, like laser focus, never once gives up, and has never met a, an attack that she doesn't think she can dig. That has been evidence here. Boy, some little quick attacks here from both sides, and that one is wide. Work done, but Dania De La Cruz from her knees in the back court saved it early on. Great quickness. Cat-like instincts, the ability to just stay with it after the deflection, so impressive. That play ends up turning into a point. It took a few more contacts, but it eventually found its way out of bounds and a point for Team Dela Cruz. We are tied in the third. Time for the Geico defensive play of the match. And it's all about defense at the net and the blocking of Molly McCage. The six foot three middle blocker is timing it perfectly, dropping her hands back into the court so she doesn't get tooled. And her three blocks are the defensive play of the match. The end of the season will be awarding the Geico Defensive Player of the Year. This athlete's unlimited award comes with an added $5,000 bonus for the winner. 69-58, Team Dela Cruz has closed out the overall win. Now they're looking for the sweep. It is a race to six, win by two. It would be a clean sweep for Dela Cruz. It would be a salvage for Team Drews. Last time these teams will be together because we will shuffle it up again tomorrow. Key Michael hosts the draft for one last time in 2022. Who gets drafted? Where do the players land? What color jersey will they be wearing for championship week? 
1 p.m. Eastern tomorrow on AU Pro Sports YouTube and Facebook. Back to serve. And getting a return is Taylor Bruns. Taking roots, and it's a different Taylor in the chair. Hey, finally, you're back. Oh my god, Kevin, are you OK? I've been working on my bench and my squat numbers, yeah. Oh, I'm, I was so worried about you. I heard you got ripped in Papa <laughs> Shop by Yvonne. Are you just <laughs> want to make sure that you are OK? Uh-huh. And ripped in Pickleball this morning there, there's by a lot Cassidy's of, mom. There's a lot of really uh, false rumors flying around okay, AU Okay, but right you're now. OK from the whooping? I'm salvageable, yes. OK, I'm, good. I'll make it through this. Licking his wounds. <laughs> OK, I, don't, I didn't want you to lose your place in the Book of Unlimited. Taylor, tell me about your time out on the floor here. You've really taken advantage. Yeah, I mean, Betty is the best. It's Betty de la best. And I am just living to be playing with a living legend. Oh, I think that I'm supposed to go back in now. I'll miss you so much. Taylor Fricano back in as Danny Drews. Uh, oh, watch, speaking. she's coming back. She's totally coming back to us. I love it. Speaking of physical comedy. False alarm. False Taylor, false I love alarm. it that you came back. False alarm. I'm so sorry. I missed you guys so much. I'm like eating this mic right now. I'm hungry. How about now? How about, it's like, I can like taste it. <laughs> it tastes like success though. <laughs> That's what your side has had tonight, why? What, wait, what, what'd you say? Why has your side had success tonight? Our, our side has had success because our bench is fire and our team is lit. <laughs> Except for some moments. Taylor, what's it like? Take us into your head when you are waiting for that opportunity. You're uh -oh. given the chance to start, and you get that opportunity, and you make the most of it. I mean, I've loved to see you just explode on the court. Thank you. Honestly, I have been behind the best opposite in the world, Shayla Castro, and I've been able to watch her crush it and kill it. And so I've been her second in command, and I have loved every minute of it. But I finally got my chance when we you know, broke up mom and dad. Mom is Shayla, dad is Betty. And you know, Betty grabbed me. Actually, Shayla grabbed me first. I went with mom. And then dad picked me up afterwards. So you know, I'm just trying to be like the best, almost not really Shayla that I can be. Is your love for volleyball back? And where's that going to lead you? I, this is so fun. Volleyball is so fun. And I don't know where it's going to lead me. I'm probably going to go back overseas. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to do this next year, um, but I would love to come back to it. I just have to kind of close close the book of Taylor's abroad journey um, before I, I come back to the motherland. Meanwhile, we're looking at a replay. That ball is out to me, so I think you've got another point, Taylor. What do you guys need to do to close this out? First of all, I saw the line bounce, but little, that's just me. Little sandworm. I saw the, I saw the line bounce a little bit. No, it was just, just, that's just me. What was the question? I'm sorry. Oh, what do you guys need to do? Three points to close this out. Hey, we need to do what we do best, which is pass, set up our pins and our middles, and just execute. Honestly, I think that we've done a really good job of keeping them on their toes. You know, Betty throws a tip in, and then she hits high line, she hits high hands, Veronica, same thing. So Alicia does a really good job of moving the ball around. So we just need to do what Lava does best, which is ball. All right, well, you're on schedule to get back in there in a moment. Thanks for joining us. You are so welcome. <laughs> See you next time. Thanks for watching Disney Channel. Taylor Fricano back to the match. That was the full Fricano. I love it. I mean, we got that when she was a bench player. Now that we're still getting that fire when she's starting, it's kind of fun. We're at 22 apiece, win by two here in the third. Betty tries to work off the block, saved by McClendon. Nice and finish. the cleanup by Farrah. Good heads up play by Rachel Farrah. Seeing that ball just trickle along the tape. It starts with the transition and the great save by McClendon, and then Danny Drews doing what she does best, taking out the trash, and Farrah finishing it up. More Betty, more defense from Sam Bothy. Trying to wipe it was Childress. Did she get a touch? She thinks she did. Oh, she got a net violation is what she got on her. 24-22, trying to avoid the sweep. Here it is, set point for Team Drews, a salvage for the weekend here. They've won just one previous set throughout the week.
up and down to Betty, who puts it in the corner again. They fight it off, but that'll be a second set point opportunity coming now in service reception for Team Drews. Yeah, Team Drews with the first chance to score, first chance at offense, but can they get a pass? Or are they gonna have to go high outside to Drews? Good matchup for them, Drews against Childress. Tip, Childress has it. Yep, Drews again. And that'll do. Twenty-five, twenty-three. Final score: seventy-three, sixty-four. The overall goes in favor of Team Delacruz, but forty points taken there. Hugely important in the championship chase for everyone on Team Drews. And much improved offense by Team Drews in that third set, hitting two ten as a team. Danny Drews with four kills in that set, relied upon so heavily. Nice job keeping that ball in front of her. 13 kills on the match this time, just finding the line to finish off the set win for her team. The 140 team points will help Team Delacruz and Badania stay in the number one spot. She'll be wearing gold next week. We'll be back to Dallas momentarily. In Dallas, the last match of week four. Fair getting in on some hugs. Famous Fair along with Betania and Taylor Fricano. Wrapping up a two and one weekend for Team Dela Cruz. The near sweep, 73 64, and just two points separating them from taking it all home in this one. Kevin Barnett back with Heather Cox, and we have Cassie Lickman joining us. Another successful weekend for you, Cass. What was good with Team Dela Cruz this week? This was just a team of veterans. I mean, I think I think Betty just assembled a really complete team, uh, and people around her who just know how to play volleyball. And so I felt like all of the communication during the game was just value add, um, just really efficient between points, and didn't make a lot of errors, and just kind of stayed in, ga in games and in rallies and were patient. Everybody knew that the ball was going to go to Betty De La Cruz quite a bit throughout this match, Cassidy. But how important was the supporting cast? Five players with five or more kills in addition to Betty's 18 kills. Yeah, I think it's huge. I mean, we know Betty's going to get her points, but I think a lot of teams, when they play her, their strategy is kind of that, exactly, where we know Betty's going to get those points, and we're trying to uh, stop everybody else. And so for everyone else to, to get their shots, I mean, Ronica and Molly were great. Uh, Frick was amazing. Um, so I think all of that just helps take a little bit of the pressure off Betty so she doesn't have to career high in kills every night. Do you feel like you should have mentioned Fricano uh, in, in greater form? I mean, she'd like a little more buildup? <laughs> from right behind you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> your ability to keep focus is impressive, Cass. I'm very used to this. This has been around me all week. <laughs> <laughs> How important is the fun factor? It's huge. It's huge. I mean, we are having so much fun playing here, and I think that's a lot of why we play well is because uh, we're out there just having a good time and playing great volleyball, and we love playing great volleyball, and so it kind of feeds on itself. And so the teams I've been on have been really lucky, have been really fun teams, and so I'm excited to close it out next week. Cass, you are no stranger to playing with pain tonight, playing with a pulled calf muscle. How do you do it? Just, just focus. Um, honestly, it's just kind of compartmentalizing and, and saying, okay, I know this is going to hurt right now, but I'm going to put that over here and focus on whatever's coming up next in the game. Um, and then, you know, after the game, kind of in this moment, it all kind of comes rushing back in. But it's just staying focused on whatever the next point is, whatever I need to give to my teammates. And as long as I do that, I can kind of compartmentalize and just stay in it. We know you have one more week coming up of Athletes Unlimited play. What does life look like after that? Is this the last time this next week that we'll see you in a jersey? Who knows? Who knows, Kevin? Um, you know, I already retired once from volleyball. So I think uh, from now on, it's just every time I get on the court is just kind of a bonus. And so whether or not I come back the next season is up in the air always, I think. Um, but I'm loving this right now. Um, and I just want to give a shout out to Shayla Castro, who retired tonight, because she is just a legend among legends, and I love her, and I'm just so happy for her and her next part of her life. And Cass, you did an amazing job honoring her after her match earlier tonight. You will be a captain, if all plays out as anticipated, for the first time in this championship week. So nothing like saving the best for last. What will be your primary focus 
in this final week of Athletes Unlimited play? Yeah, I mean, I got to take a look at it uh, now that we're finished. I didn't want to look ahead at all. Um, but I think for me, it's just trying to figure out kind of what complements me as a player um, and the, the pieces that I need. We have a lot of great volleyball players here. And so I think obviously I'm more of kind of a, a passer and defender, so I probably need a big arm to start out with. All right, we'll look for that in the draft tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern. Thanks, Cass. Thank you. A successful weekend for Cassie Lickman as a member of Team Dela Cruz. They go 2-1, and one, and they close out 73-64. Let's take a look at some highlights of number eight. Well, I talked about it in the open. At the beginning of the night, she just makes everything better, betters the ball on every single touch. Just such a smart player, a very high volleyball IQ, that time tooling the block, this time finding that deep corner, and, of course, the ace doing it from every position on the court. Cassie Lickman, multi-talented, now casting her MVP votes. Those points yet to be handed out. We will have Molly McCage on the other side, star middle blocker for Team Dela Cruz. Back to Dallas shortly. There is much love across the Athletes Unlimited brand from one PEC member to another. Tasha Cloud of basketball on the left-hand side, Cassie Lickman of volleyball on the right. Tasha Cloud supporting all the athletes across Athletes Unlimited. Basketball season one in the books just recently. Volleyball season two has one week to go. Let's go courtside again with Key Michael and Molly McCage. Yeah, we're on now. <laughs> I've got Molly McCage here. You were my player to watch today, and you did not prove me wrong. I appreciate you for that. Oh, yeah, I, I tried. I don't even know. I feel like I... Ran around in circles. There were so many good rallies. It was great. That's, that's a middle mentality always. We're like chickens with their head cut off. But exactly. you had five kills, four blocks, and you were defensive play of the game. Oh, Did it okay. feel like that? Did it feel that smooth out there? Um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's really nice knowing that like whenever I'm blocking, I know that the defense behind me is good. You know what I mean? Like having that trust as a blocker, I'm not just like up there flailing. Um, I think that helps my mindset. Yeah, and the energy tonight, just from, from you, from the sidelines, from the, the crowd, did, could you feel that on the court? Yes, there were girls cheering right behind us. There were these like dance parties happening. It felt like a home game in college again, like just like that fun vibe. Loved it tonight. Yeah, so good tonight. Everyone who was here, thank you for coming out. And you guys at home should definitely come out to the next one. But you're part of the PC, and I got to see a little sneak behind the scenes of that at the PC shoot with you and Franklin and all the girls. Yes. How, how cool is it being part of the PC, the fact that it even exists? Yes, it's pretty revolutionary. It's also fun just because of people that are on it. And then, like, we get to meet all of the people that we recruit. And then also, like, we're like the bridge between the players and the staff. I feel like we get the best of both worlds. We get, like, the staff part, the player part, and then we get to recruit all these players to come play for the best league in America. <laughs> That's not even a lie. It literally is the only and the best yes. by definition. But it's so cool. It feels like a family here. I mean, I can see the basketball players out there joking around with Jade and the other volleyball players. So it, it's like a AU family, right? Do you feel that? Oh, totally. The fact that they're here supporting us, like, now I need to go to a basketball game. I can't wait to go to lacrosse and softball. Like part of the AU fam. I'm just gonna tell you, if you go to a game, make sure you call it a game, not a match. I cannot tell you how much crap I got for that during basketball league <clears throat> season. It's a game. Is it a only a match during volleyball and tennis? Who knows? Who knows the rules? Who okay. makes it up? I don't know. Only but your, your parents were here. They brought you some flowers. That's yes. so cool to have them, right? It was. I sneak peek over there. Just having them there, it's just, it's a rock, you know, just being like, my family's here supporting me. That's really cool. They get to see me as an adult play volleyball. Yeah. You know, it's not just like a college game. Love that. Well, yeah. I hope that you come back for season three because, you know, we, we love having you. That'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Molly. Thanks, Key. Time to boot up the AU Cruiser John Patrickoff and sail that thing across the United States filled with some of the athletes from across the Athletes Unlimited brand. Heather Cox, your final reaction to week four. Well, it's been so impressive. I love the strength of Team De La Cruz, and I can't wait until the draft tomorrow to see what happens for championship week. So much on the line, so many leaderboard points waiting to be had, and I just am really looking forward to seeing how they utilize the depth to make four great teams. We've seen sweeps make a huge difference. Absolutely, and uh, it will continue next week. All right, Shayla. Castro concluded her evening and her career with us in a victory 75-54 in match number one. Match number two went 73-64. Team Dela Cruz two points short of a sweep.
We head to championship weekend. It starts on Thursday. For Heather Cox, Key Michael, and our entire Athletes Unlimited crew, I'm Kevin Barnett. Reminder, that final week begins Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Don't forget to join us for the draft tomorrow, Facebook and YouTube. 1 p.m. Eastern is the time. Check out AUProSports.com for all the information. We'll see you with the title on the line.